When I think of the perfectly designed Samsung phone, I instantly often think of the Galaxy S10 series, and three years after release, I think the series is still going strong. This is the Galaxy S10 Plus though in 2022. Is it still worth it? Let's find out together. The last time I actually took a long-term look at the Galaxy S10 Plus, we started with the display, and so I think it's probably gonna be worth doing again. This is an incredible AMOLED screen. Even despite that upper right notch position, this is one of the few areas that I think has been a bit of a painful aspect as that elongated shape of that pill shaped notch makes it probably the worst implementation that Samsung has adopted to date. That said, it didn't last too long either as the Note 10 series just went straight to a central screen hole, which I think is probably better for symmetry. It does just make things a little bit uneven and even though it's not that bad, it isn't enough to detract from what is a super screen for what it's worth. I'll also say I don't hate curved screens, but it's easy to see why people do hate them. And there's no denying that they are much easier to damage without adequate protection. My S10 Plus is a little older now, a little wiser, so it has a few scuffs and scrapes, but a good screen protector would have prevented that. So it's something I would definitely consider picking up if you haven't already done so. The screen itself, I think it's still really gorgeous and that is testament to Samsung's Pro S as a display maker. Realistically, save that 60 hertz refresh rate and maybe some slightly bigger than average bezels compared to the flagships of today. I'd be very surprised if many out there, many devices out there in the late 2021 market and early 2022, even that affordable range can even match the S10 Plus's display. Despite the fact that the S10 Plus is a premium flagship from 2019, I've got to say as well, everything else about this phone feels exceptional. The materials used, I think they're what really separates and elevates it above similarly priced phones released around the same time. It's easily my favorite Galaxy design for a number of reasons. And most of that is actually due to that back plate and that back design. There's just lot lovely soft rear curves. And while I think if you do prefer flat screens, that th this might not necessarily be the best for you. I actually think the display curves at the front also add an extra layer of overall comfort, especially when you roll it around in your palm. I've said it before and I'll say it again. I think this is an area where Samsung has spent the time to understand your initial in the hand impressions and ensured that translates to what is tailored comfort. It is important for something that you carry with you everywhere. And I think there's a little bit of an attention to detail here that really, really stands out amongst a sea of other smartphones released in 2019. I will say though that the slippery sides, they still annoy me a little bit, but put it into perspective, you put a case on it anyway, and there are a few smartphones at least at this stage, they're not quite as slippery, but you can consider this a bit of a nitpick. As I said, you'll put it in a case anyway. I really like that visor as it kind of, it neatens up the package and it stands out. And then on top of that, when you're taking photos in portrait orientation, which you probably will do most of the time anyway, that layout is brilliantly placed as it's central and you don't get your hands in the way. As, as, I, as I'm gonna keep on saying, I think it's the best way of putting a triple camera setup on the back of a phone and it looks better than an upper left area that every other phone seems to be sticking to and adhering to at least pre this and since it as well. I'll talk about that camera a little bit more later on and just how it's aged but as I mentioned alongside the actual aesthetic benefits there are some usability gains as well from having that central camera kind of position and I'd really love to see more phones adopt it but it just seems doesn't seem to be the case at this point in time. One of the biggest benefits for hardware holdouts out there with the Galaxy S10 Plus is the inclusion of a headphone port making this officially the last Samsung Galaxy S series device to come with a wired audio option. I know that is going to be important to some people out there but I've got to say by this point in time I don't care as much as I did um, being completely honest with you. There is something nice though about having a smartphone that comes with both an IP68 rating, micro SD card slot and headphone port and it's a major benefit as you're not really sacrificing one feature over the other just for the sake of aesthetics. I have seen a few complaints about the in-display ultrasonic fingerprint scanner and I've got to say at least until the most recent two full Android updates I would have agreed with you. Since Android 11 things have improved quite drastically and the fingerprint scanner is pretty darn reliant for me once it's registered a couple of times per finger. That said, you just kind of have to get used to the fact that the ultrasonic fingerprint scanner isn't quite as fast as an optical reader, but once that's out the way, this is a pretty good way to have biometric security on your device. Let's talk about the software experience though on the S10 Plus because it's simultaneously awesome and a little bit of a sore point, at least for me, 
Since I last took a look at the former flagship, it's been updated to Android 11 and now Android 12. And that rounds out that full three version upgrades that were promised by Samsung. Um, you will get another year of security patches on top of that for four full years of updates. So that means Android 13 sadly won't be coming, at least officially. So what I have here is the Exynos 9820 model and things seem to run fine, but man, I would have loved that Snapdragon 855 model as there is a distinct advantage in both battery life and overall under the hood power. That said, even at three years old, I can't necessarily fault the daily experience too much. It's not too dissimilar to many mid ranges out there that you can buy, but you might get a little bit more from something like the Snapdragon 765G, even though it would benchmark around the same level, at least in terms of the battery lifespan stakes. So maybe if you do want to choose another phone out there, the Snapdragon 765G kind of sits around that Exynos 9820 level. So realistically, this is going to be a mid ranger by 2022 standards. In the same breath, though, I've got to say the performance levels are still pretty good in, or borderline excellent in my experience. That said, I don't really push phones as much as I used to. Things themselves, they're snappy and the animations are nice and smooth. And while I find One UI a little bit overbearing at times, it's definitely improving year over year. Now let's circle back though and talk about those cameras that I lauded about the positioning of on the S10 Plus. As I said, I love that centrally placed setup as it's actually harder to obscure a lens with your finger, which is important when taking a photo in or even shooting videos in landscape. It's just a really nice triple camera selection with that wide, ultra wide and the telephoto that I think unlike the S20 series, which were released the year after, don't necessarily suffer from some of the over sharpening issues that was, were a result of using that first gen larger sensor. And at no point though would you feel like you can't get what I would consider a great shot, but there are some trademarks like bump saturation and the typical Samsung aesthetic overall. That said, it does really hold up well given the improvements that we've seen across the, the smartphone photography industry. And I, I wouldn't say I've felt unhappy with any image that I've taken with the S10 Plus, and I do think it holds up really, really well. I haven't really discussed the battery at this stage because I think this is one area where I've found the S10 Plus isn't all that viable for an all day phone, at least for me. Naturally, I think devices with plenty of charge cycles and when the battery started to age a bit, really don't hold up as well as they probably should. Sure, there is a reasonable 4,000 mAh cell inside, but lots of charge cycles over the past three years on and off, and the deterioration is kind of as you'd expect. I think a battery replacement might be something you should consider, well, at least in my opinion, but that can add some extra cost that you might not necessarily want to do. But overall, the battery is just okay, middle of the road, back, slap bang in the average stakes. So the short story wrapping this all up is that the Galaxy S10 Plus holds up really quite well considering it's now almost three years old. And while that's not quite as good as it was at launch, if you don't want to go for an affordable smartphone with some major compromises in, in kind of most of the areas, if you make compromises in just a few areas, the S10 Plus, now available at under $180 or £180, even in 2022, might be worth a look, especially as a decent backup. So that's the S10 Plus in 2022. I think it's a bargain, and it's the last full-featured Galaxy S model. That said, I hope you enjoyed this video and maybe learned a few things about a slightly older Galaxy S series flagship. If you did manage to make it this far, though, how about you leave a star emoji down below? Cheers for watching, though and I will speak to you in a bit.